going on dudes and dudettes so USC got another 2020 commitment right after I believe it was the day right after Bryce Young committed to QB they got a, a wide receiver named Chris Hudson I believe he is a wide receiver at St. John Bosco so they've been you know getting out a lot of great players the past couple years so it's awesome that we're able to get another one of those guys like Chris Steele ready for the future especially at that position he's a four-star guy so that's great to see and then we also have Jake Olson being on a watch list for an award as well. That's for players who do very well in the community and do a lot of stuff, either raising awareness or helping out whatever way they can. So it's awesome that he's doing that and that they're recognizing him as well. So let's keep going. And yes, freaking Jason Verrett has had another injury. Now it's to his Achilles. He's been having the past two seasons missing the whole year for the Chargers because of his freaking knees. And now it's his Achilles of all freaking things, which means he's obviously been trying to do something else to be able to get back on the field. And he's obviously rushing it too much. And that's how they say you can injure your Achilles like that, which I'm pretty sure it is just because he's had so much, you know, lower body injuries in the past just sucks because I've said the past few years that they should have traded him even when the first injury came out I said the next year they should have done it they didn't he gets injured and now we're back here again where they didn't trade him when they had a few good months where he was healthy enough and he, he could have traded him but they didn't and look what happens now but he is on him and Hunter Henry are on a list where it's like the PUP list slash active so they're maybe thinking that he could probably come back later in the season, like whether it's a few games or even for the playoffs, if the Chargers do make it, which we're hoping. But that's great to see for Hunter Henry, but he did have an ACL, so it's tough to see him being able to come back, even though he did have it pretty early. But then to also with Verrett's Achilles injury, it does not seem likely at all, which sucks a bunch, but it's something we've got to deal with. We'll keep going. We'll strive for greatness and hopefully at least make the playoffs and that's so awesome to see the ex duke player jason tatum who yes at times during before they drafted him i did want them to draft him even though it was kind of like weird why would you draft two small forwards you know the first year you had brandon ingram and then you'd get jason tatum but obviously at this moment jason tatum looks like the elite star that he's going to become just because I mean he has that Mamba mentality as a lot of people like to say and even going through his certain workouts and a lot of his like breaking down video by video somebody did this thing and there were like same exact moves that even Kobe was doing whether middle or late in his career and it's like the exact same person it looked like an exact copy so it's just awesome that he's even working with him now to get even better at those moves and you never know, he could be the next Kobe Bryant. And he's definitely very young and in, into his career, but he's definitely motivated. That's definitely what it looks like. And it sucks that he's on the Celtics. Hopefully he has a change of heart uh, in about three or four years when his contract's up and doesn't sign any extensions to go back with him. Or hopefully, you know, he gets traded to the Lakers somehow or gets to the Lakers somehow. But we'll see. And uh, good luck to him and definitely on his way to becoming a star. Alrighty, and then of course the QB carousel for the Chargers as it comes to finding a replacement for Phil Rivers, whether they're going to re-sign him at the end of this year to keep him for a few more years because he says he can still play, or if they even want him, and then finding a guy in this next year's draft because they're supposedly projected to pick 17, which is as always in the middle of the draft where they always seem to be. And the quarterback they're saying is Jared Sidham. He's the quarterback for Auburn. He could have came out this year, but decided to go back. And I'm sure the Chargers would have picked him too. I don't know. He's kind of like a same, similar copy to Philip Rivers, which is what I don't like. I want something different. You know, there's guys like Drew Locke out there, Missouri quarterback, the West Virginia quarterback, Will Greer, Shea Patterson, who's at Michigan right now. He was at Ole Miss. Then you also have Clayton Thorson as well. Sure, I'm missing another guy or two that I'm really looking forward to seeing this next college football season. But these guys, those guys are definitely 
uh, an upgrade in my opinion compared to what we have right now Phil Rivers and they give you a few, a few of those guys give you dynamic in the running game as well because they could do options and they could take off for a good first down too so they definitely have that elite athleticism that Phil Rivers does not have but Phil Rivers does have an arm and the smarts to be able to still be in the NFL for now. Okay, and Donovan Mitchell said that he told the GMs he met with them personally to see about drafting Grayson Allen at 21, which is where Utah did. It's always great to see that your up-and-coming rising star and Donovan Mitchell, who was just a rookie this last season, wanted a guy who he probably had some bad history with while he played at Louisville and Grayson Allen played at Duke. They had a few run-ins, but he knew his competitive you know, guy that he was and wanted that similar person on his team. And now that they are teammates, I'm sure he's happy and, you know, I'm just it just sucks that he was picked right before the Lakers were about to pick him. Like, I think it was three or four spots, but who knows if they were going to pick him or not. But good luck to him and try to see, like, something at least went well for someone else other than the Lakers. But then also the list of the non-conference games came out for Duke. Obviously the one I'm other than Kentucky, which is the first game, which we got our butts whooped a few years ago, but we do have the better players this time, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a nice win for us. But definitely the ending of that schedule, I believe it's in February, where we get St. John's, which we got upset by this last year in a tough game. But luckily they don't have Shamari Pons, who went up like 30-plus points that game. And I'm just glad he's not there, and hopefully we get our revenge. And it looks like it's a home game, but we'll see. Usually those are neutral side games. And then also Channing Fry was basically saying after he got to Cleveland that the Lakers didn't want him, and that's why he chose to go back to Cleveland. But it's just obvious that he's an older player. He does have a condition where he can't be playing as many minutes as well. So obviously the Lakers wanted to go younger, more athletic. That's how we didn't bring you back, buddy. But good luck to you, and hopefully you can have continued, continued success in the NBA. But thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. And have a great rest of your day.